Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 Jailbreak News update. So the big news this week is that the Flow has been awarded another $10,000 bounty from PlayStation's Hacker One Bug Bounty Program, where security researchers can report vulnerabilities in the PlayStation 4, PS5 and other PlayStation services. And depending on the severity of the report, a bounty may be awarded to the researcher providing they adhere to an NDA that prevents them from leaking the vulnerability before it's been patched. This allows PlayStation to get out ahead of an exploit and fix it before it can cause any real damage. But the good thing about the flow is compared to some of the other researchers, he actually requests disclosure of his reports after they've been resolved, allowing the report to be made public several months later, which usually results in us getting a new jailbreak. Now, this is exactly what happened with his previous report that resulted in the 11.0 jailbreak for the PS4. It was resolved back in September of 2023, and at the time, the flow did warn people about it on Twitter. He told people not to update, and I did cover that in a news update at the time and predicted it would take around three to six months for it to be disclosed. And of course, that's exactly what happened. The report was disclosed on HackerOne in March of this year, which has resulted in the 11.0 jailbreak with PP Pwn. So although we don't have all the information at the moment, there's a few things that we can tell from this report so far. So first of all, he received a $10,000 bounty, which means that it is some kind of kernel exploit, most likely, because all of the other previous $10,000 reports have been a kernel exploit or a user land plus kernel exploit chain, some kind of kernel exploit that's triggerable on the console. It normally results in a $10,000 bounty. We can see that from the program highlights. We can see a high severity report, which is what a kernel exploit is. It's a high severity report. And it, for the PS4 and PS5, it results in $10,000. That is the reward. So that's what we can expect there. Now, again, it'll probably take three to six months before it becomes public, just like with the 11.0 jailbreak. Now, this has most likely already been patched because typically Sony will patch the vulnerability first before they close the report. So the fact that the report has already been closed, it's already been resolved. That means that this has likely already been patched in whatever the latest system software update is. And that would suggest that this is only for the PS4 and perhaps does not affect the PS5 in this particular case. Now, the reason why we can kind of make that assumption is that 11.52 is the latest firmware for the PS4 that has most likely already patched this vulnerability, especially since it says here in their update notes that they've made some security fixes to the system software, which is typically what they say when they patch a vulnerability. However, they do not say the same thing about the latest PS5 update 9.60. There is actually no mention of any security fixes in this new version. So that is kind of interesting. It might be that this particular kernel exploit only affects the PS4 and does not affect the PS5. And therefore, they did not have to include any kind of security patch in the PS5 for this vulnerability, whereas they have in the PS4. Now, there is still a small chance that it could affect the PS5 and that Sony just hasn't released an update yet for the PS5 to patch it because perhaps it's much harder to trigger or it's less of a, of a threat on the PS5 because of the extra security measures that the PS5 already has. So it's less urgent to try and patch it immediately. But it seems unlikely uh, at this stage that it's affecting the PS5. But we'll wait and see. If there's, if there's a new PS5 update that comes out very soon, within the next few days, like a 10 point something update comes out for the PS5 in the next few days, or maybe even a 12 point something update for uh, the PS4 comes out in the coming days. And they specifically say in their update notes that they've made some security fixes to the system software, then that would kind of change things. But if that doesn't happen, then it's likely that this has been patched as of 11.52 on the PS4 and does not affect the PS5. But again, we'll have to wait and see if anything changes there. If you go to any of the previous exploits that were disclosed, like this one from the flow for the 11.0 jailbreak, if we just head over to this report and take a look, we can see this was reported on September 2023. And then it was subsequently resolved. So the $10,000 bounty was awarded. There was some negotiation. He got a bit of an extra bounty on top of that. You can see that it was resolved on January 5th, 2024. And 11.02 was the system update that patched this vulnerability. So that was released in early December or late November of 2023. So there's about a month of a gap between the release of the update that actually patches the vulnerability 
and the report being closed and resolved here on Hacker One, because typically what will happen is PlayStation will push out a new update to patch the vulnerability. They will then come back to Hacker One and ask the researcher to confirm that the new update has fixed the vulnerability. And then the flow in this case will come back and test it and say, yes, it looks like it's been patched. It's no longer working. The vulnerability is fixed. And then shortly after that, the bounty will be rewarded and then the report will be resolved and closed. So that is what usually happens with Hacker One. And so 11.52 came out in kind of mid July of this year. And of course, the report has only just been closed a day ago. So towards the end of August, so just over a month. So the timescales do match up. And especially given the fact that, of course, it literally says here that they've made security fixes to the system software in the update notes, would definitely suggest that this was the update that patched the vulnerability that the flow has reported here. Most likely, again, it's, there's still a possibility I could be wrong. Maybe there's a, a 12.0 update comes out next in a few days for PS4 and it says that they've added security fixes to the system software. And then that might mean that 11.52 is also vulnerable. But for now, I would say it's most likely 11.50 and 11.02 that are vulnerable to this exploit. And we'll probably see it in another three to six months uh, when it will eventually be disclosed. And it looks like the PS5 may not be vulnerable since there's nothing in the update notes for the PS5 suggesting that they've made any security fixes. So that's my general analysis of things as it stands right now. Again, there could be further developments and I'll update you guys if there are any changes. So continuing with some PS4 updates, Moore One released the persistent notifications for 11.0. Originally, I believe this was for 9.00. I do have a video on how to fully set it up and install it for 9.00 and the process is the same on 11.0 so essentially you just download the two package files you install both packages one is a payload guest and the other one is a package that just installs the notification payload that can be loaded from payload guest so you run that one first and that will get the file copied over to the hard drive and then once that's done you can delete that package that application and just use payload guest and when you run payload guest, you'll have the notification shortcut there that you can select and it will run that payload using the bin loader built into Gold Hen. So make sure you have the bin loader enabled in Gold Hen for that to work. And then from there, if you go to your notifications, you will see all of the shortcuts that appear. So these are just some handy shortcuts that can be used to access specific settings like the debug settings, open a web page to take you to the to other payloads that you can launch. Uh, you know a quick shortcut for the network options storage options all of that kind of stuff so that's one of the recent updates there's also been another payload released uh, for the ps4 s flash zero dumper so this will just dump your s flash zero to a usb drive which is the firmware for the nor chip on your ps4 you can normally just get this with ftp by connecting on ftp and going into the dev folder and finding the s flash zero file in there and you can copy it out that way but if you have trouble with FTP or you just want to have another way of accessing it, then you can use this payload to dump it to a USB drive instead. So that's another thing that has also been launched. Then we have Echo Stretch, who has been working on a lot of different things at the moment. So he released a bunch of payloads from the Scene Collective that have been updated for 11.0 up to 11.50. So these are all of the Scene Collective payloads. A lot of these payloads were already ported, but not all of them were. He's gone through and ported all of them over and set them up so that they can be loaded with Payload Guest, where all you have to do is just connect on FTP and then drag all of the payloads into the Data and then Payloads folder. And then once you do that, those payloads will then be available to be loaded inside the Payload Guest application. So you can use that to load all of these additional payloads that have now been updated to work on 11.0 and 11.50. So if the Flows exploit turns out to actually uh, work up to 11.50, then when we get that new jailbreak, you'll be able to load these payloads uh, using that jailbreak as well. He's also been working on updating PS4 Debug and WebRTE. WebRTE is kind of an outdated payload these days, but it can still be handy for those who want to use the older web trainers uh, with their PS4 to apply cheats instead of using the gold hen cheats. So that's something that he's been updating and he's also getting them working with his hen VTX, which is an alternative version of hen that you can use on firmwares that have not yet got support for gold hen. So essentially the hen VTX payload is getting a lot more functional now with these other payloads now being ported over to work with it. Sticking with the theme of customization, Moore One has also released something quite interesting. 
a way of installing custom PS4 themes through the browser on the PS4 itself instead of, you know, a lot of the previous methods for installing these persistent themes were quite messy uh, because these are not using the normal theme feature of the console uh, because that doesn't work with fake packages, they're not persistent. So instead of using actual custom themes, we have to literally replace all of the icons on the hard drive and the sound files and all of that stuff uh, in order to create our custom themes and make them permanent. So Moore One's made this a lot more convenient. This is only for 9.00 at the moment. It does not currently work with 11.0. But if you do have a 9.00 PS4, you can just head to PS4 themes pkg.github.io to browse all of the available themes. And then you just find one that you like, you select it, and it will run a payload, which will download an application to apply the custom theme to your PS4. Once that has been downloaded, you can then select the wallpaper, which will open up the background image wallpaper in a separate tab. You can just press square to full screen it and then use the share button to take a screenshot of that background image so that you can apply that to your final theme. So once that's done, you can go ahead and launch the application that it installed and then you can select the option to install it. And then that will go through and replace all of the icons with the custom ones. It will replace all of the sound files, get the custom theme set up. It will then shut down the PS4, you reboot, and once you're back onto the home menu, you'll have all of your custom icons applied, at which point you can then finish off the theme by applying your background image by going into the theme settings and selecting a background image from one of your saved screenshots, and then you should be good to go from there. You can also select your color theme for the settings, and then you have your completed theme. So hopefully this will also come to 11.0 sometime soon. But anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.